Dear students, welcome to the English Second Paper class brought to you by Amar Ghare Amar School. I know that many of you are missing your classroom because you are away from your school for a long time. But it's not time to get upset because the government has brought your classroom to your home through Amar Ghare Amar School telecasted by Shangshad Bangladesh Television. So without wasting any time, let's begin our class. What can you see in this picture? We can see that it's a picture of a stadium where a great number of spectators are around it. Let's hear a commentary at first. You have this live commentary in your book, but now I'm going to read it for you. Hello listeners. Welcome to the running commentary of the annual sports meet of Bangladesh Olympic Association. I'm speaking from the Bangabandhu National Stadium, Dhaka. It's just 8 o'clock in the morning and we are expecting a grand, grand opening of the annual event in next few minutes. As I'm standing in front of the main gate, I can see the crowd enjoying this sunny morning in the Eastern Gallery. Now, the President of Bangladesh Olympic Association is entering the ground along with the officials. The athletes are gathering in the field and they are warming up. Just now, I can see a great athlete in front of me, two times gold medalist Jamal Haider. He is waving his hands to the crowd and as you can hear, the spectators are happy to see their heroes and they are cheering so loud. Now what can you see in this commentary? There is something that is very common. The verbs that have been underlined here have same structure. And what is that structure? In all these cases, we are seeing that at first, to be verb has been used. And after that, we have added ing after the verb. Now here we can see another picture. Here we can see that a great number of students are doing something. How can we make sentence out of these pictures? Let's describe. For example, in the first picture, we can see that someone is watching TV. In the second one, we can see that a girl is playing a violin. In the third one, we can see a boy reading books. On the other hand, in other pictures, we can describe as a boy is playing computer games. A student is playing football. A little boy is going to school. A boy is riding bicycle. A boy is skating. And at the last picture, we can say a boy is playing badminton. I think after seeing all these pictures, you have already understood what we are going to learn today. Yes, your guess is right. We are going to learn present continuous tense in today's class. Now what is present continuous tense? The tense we use for this is called present continuous tense. This tense is also known as present progressive tense. By that it means that present continuous tense can also be known as present progressive. What are we going to learn today from today's class? After learning today's lesson, we will be able to understand the uses of present continuous tense. We will be able to write sentences correctly using the correct structure of present continuous. And lastly, we will be able to ask and answer questions using present continuous tense. Now how can we define present continuous? We use the present continuous when the action is happening at the time of speaking. For example, as a speaker, when I'm speaking now, what are the things that are going around me can be described using present continuous tense. Let's look at the examples. Please be quiet. I'm working. Let's go out now. It isn't raining anymore. I'm tired. I'm going to bed now. Where's Mary? She is having a bath. In all these examples, what we can see is 
the action that are being referred here is happening at the present moment. Now in this picture we can see that there is a straight line and there is a circle around present progressive. That means when we are speaking right at that moment, the events that are happening around it are known as present continuous. The present progressive is used for actions going on at the moment of speaking and for actions taking place only for a short period of time. That means the action that will be taken place in case of present progressive will be temporary. Now let's look at the uses of present continuous tense. Present continuous tense is used to talk about happening in a period around now. As we have seen in the previous picture, there were some events going on that are happening around now. For example, today, this week, now, at present, at this moment, this evening. In cases of all these time expressions, the tense that we are going to use is present continuous. Let's see the example. You're working hard today. Is Suzanne working this week? As I've mentioned before, if you have this kind of time expressions, you're going to use present continuous. Now let's look at the second uses. Activities at the moment of speaking. Which means when we are speaking, the activities that happen right then can be described as present continuous tense. For example, I am solving a sum. The children are sleeping. I hope you have understood these two uses. Now let's see the other uses as well. The third uses of present continuous tenses, it can be used for something which is changing, growing, or developing. I think the examples are going to clarify this a bit more. The children are growing up quickly. Your, the climate is changing rapidly. Your English is improving. As you can see, the actions that are happening here, for example, growth, development, change, or improvement is a part of a continuous process. For that reason, we are using present continuous tense in here. Now the last uses. It can be used for planned future action. As in, we are starting a new course next month. So the course that will be started, it is going to happen in next month, but it is a part of a plan. For this reason, we have used present continuous tense in here. Now we are going to see the structure of present continuous tense that can be used in affirmative sentence, negative sentence, and interrogative sentence. So at first, the structure of affirmative sentence. When we use present continuous tense in affirmative sentence, at first we are going to start with the subject, then we are going to use the be verb which is am, is, or are, then we are going to use the verb, we are going to add ing after the verb, and at the end of the sentence we have the object. For example, I am working at the moment. They are looking for a job. He is waiting for you. In all these examples, we can see that the subject has been placed at the beginning. A to be verb has been followed by. Verb plus ing has been added. And at the end, we have used the object. For example, in case of working, what have we done? We have added ing after the main form of the verb work. In the second one, we have used ing after the verb look. And in the third one, we have used ing after the verb wait. 
Now these are the structure of negative sentence that use present continuous tense. In case of negative sentence, we just have to add not after the be verb, which means the sub sentence will start with the subject, then the be verb am, is, or are, then we are going to use a not, since it is referring to something as negative, then we are going to use verb plus ing, and at the end we have the object. Now the verb that we are going to use here depends on the subject. For example, you already know that if you have first person, I, as a subject, we are going to use am. If you have first person plural number, we, as the subject, we can use are after that. In case of second person, as in you, we are going to use are after the subject. And in case of third person singular number, he, she, or it, we are going to use is after the subject. For example, in these examples we can see, I am not driving very fast. Here, I and G have been used after the main verb drive. But, E has been omitted. Why is that so? In the next slide, I'm going to show you some rules how you can make no spelling mistake after using ing with the verb. In the second example, we can see they aren't watching TV. It is not working now. The children aren't playing in the garden. Look at the last example. The children aren't playing in the garden. The subject that are being used here is the children, which is third person plural number. And for that reason, we have used are after the subject. Moving on to the structure of interrogative sentence in case of using present continuous tense. In case of interrogative sentence, you know that we have to use the be verb at the beginning of the sentence. As in, are you listening? Are they coming to your party? Is it raining? Are you feeling sick? In all these examples, we can see a common structure. That is, we have used the be verb at the beginning. Then we have used the subject. We have added ing after the verb. And at the end, we have used the object. But what is most important thing here? Whenever you are using an interrogative sentence, do not forget to give question mark. Because without the question mark, the whole sentence becomes meaningless. Now here, I'm showing you the structure of using WH question in present continuous tense. You already know what WH questions are. Words that start with WH as in who, what, which, whose, whom are known as WH. For example, where am I going? Why is she watching? So this is the same structure that we used in interrogative sentence in case of yes no question. We have just added the WH word at the beginning. So I think you're clear now. If you want to make a WH question, just use the WH word at the beginning of the interrogative sentence. And yes, do not forget to use the question mark. As I've mentioned before, I'm going to show you some rules that you can use for using ing at the end of the verb. For example, in the first rule, we can see that verbs that end in e drop the e, and in place of that, we are going to use ing. As in, from make, we have made making. From come, we have changed coming. From write, we have made writing and from dance we have turned to dancing. In all these spellings what you can see in common? All the words have used E at the end of the verb but when we are adding ing with that 
we are deleting the E and we are adding ing in place of it. Let's look at the second row. Words that end in IE change it to YING as in die, lie, tie. In all these verbs, we can see IE at the end. But when we are, we are adding ING with it, what are we doing? We are omitting the IE part and we are replacing it with YING. Now the last row. Verbs that end in a vowel plus a consonant, double the consonant. For example, stop. In this word you can say that, see, in this word you can see that the letter that we have at the end is a consonant P. But the letter that has been used before the consonant is a vowel O. So you know the rule. If you have vowel plus consonant at the end of the word, then we are going to use the double form of the consonant as in stopping. S-T-O double P-I-N-G. Likewise, we have also made double consonant in other examples such as sitting, running and swimming. If you follow these rules, I'm sure that you're not going to make any mistake in spelling in future. But do not forget that these are the general rules. Some exceptional rules can also happen. Now let's have a quick recap. Today we have learned that we use present continuous or progressive tense to talk about actions that are happening now, actions which are currently in progress, which might not be exactly at this moment or second, and for actions that are planned for the future. We have also looked at the structures of affirmative sentence, negative sentence, interrogative sentence, and WH question. Finally, we have looked at some of the rules by which you can add ing at the end of the verb. Now it's time for homework. In the screen, I'm showing you a text that has been given in your prescribed book at page number 108. What you have to do? You have to read the text where two people are in the picture that have been described below. You have to write the verb in the bracket in the correct form and with necessary auxiliary verbs. Do not forget to do your ASW. Submit it to your respective teacher after the school reopens. And the evaluation given by your teacher will be added to your continuous assessment. If you want to watch this class again, go to our Facebook page, Amar Khore Amar School 